G'day guys and thanks for joining our session today. My name is Jai and I'm the FAE and trainer for BenQ Australia. Uh, today we're having a look at post lockdown meetings with BenQ's new duo board or CP series um, interactive flight panel. And we'll also be taking a look at our wireless casting hardware solution known as InstaShow S towards the end of this session as well. Um, if you guys have any questions along the way, please feel free just to type them out in chat and we'll, we'll make sure we have plenty of time towards the end of the session to cover those off as well. But uh, without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at this. So our agenda today for the duo board, we'll be having a look at what duo board is, uh, taking a, a, a quick focus on casting, conference and collaboration and how the duo board fits in with those scenarios. We'll have a quick look at the, the hardware overview and what makes our CP uh, series panel or our duo board special. And then we'll take a look at healthcare and IFP maintenance and management. And then we'll have a, a quick demo, a demo at the end as well, uh, showcasing some of the new features to this duo board IFP. So duo board, what's it all about? It's about this combination of collaboration and technology. So that's uh, the, the two areas that we're really focusing on with this product. For those of you who are familiar with BenQ panels, you'll notice that this is quite a different setup or a, uh, a different design to, to our usual panels, our RP or our RM series panels. Two things I just want to bring your attention to, first and foremost, is down the bottom of our panel here, uh, you can see my cursor there, we have a, a sensor box there instead of our sound bar. So that's one of the, the big changes we've made. BenQ traditionally has a sound bar that resides at the, the base of our panels there. And then also on this right hand side, you'll notice that we have a pen holder there. And that's because we've changed our pen technology to active pens now as well. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, both of those differences there that I've just mentioned and a whole bunch of the other ones as well uh, shortly. But let's dive in and have a look at uh, what we're covering today as far as casting, conference and collaboration goes. So casting uh, first and foremost. So obviously we've brought back InstaShare, which has been a long running feature on our panels, uh, which is our software solution to be able to cast from your, um, your own personal devices to our BenQ panels. So that's made a return on our duo board. And then obviously we'll be having a look um, towards the end of our, um, our hardware solution for that, which is known as InstaShow. And we'll, we'll have a quick demo of that as well and, and how you can utilize that within your meeting or office space. So once again, uh, InstaShare and InstaShow, we have two versions of InstaShow. Um, the model name for that is a WDC-10, which was our previous model. It's still our existing model as well, but we've made an advancement with that technology as well and expanded upon that with our WDC-20 or our InstaShow S. And we'll run through how you actually utilize these towards the end of the session. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to talk about InstaShare. So for those of you who are familiar, we've been able to cast from our devices to our panels for a number of years now. Initially with InstaShare, it was a one-to-one -one casting solution. So we could only cast one device to our panel at any one time. Recently, we made a change to that and we were, we've been able to cast four devices simultaneously um, just by quadrant, uh, quadranting our screen like you can see there in that, that image on the left-hand side. More recently with our new range of panels and with our duo board, we're actually able to cast nine devices simultaneously now. And we're able to split the screen accordingly with that feature as well. So it's a really great feature if we have multiple participants in that room and we wanna be able to cast from multiple devices simultaneously. Once again, we're able to two-way mirror. So not only can we mirror from our devices to our duo board, we can mirror from the duo board back to our own devices. So this is really handy in sort of large spaces or large rooms if participants or, or, or uh, people in the meeting don't have a great view of that, that duo board, they're able to cast from that to their own personal device and get a better view of, of what's being presented there as well. And that supports up to 16 devices simultaneously being able to cast from the, from the panel back to those devices. I've also incorporated two-way touch control. This feature has been relevant and available for a little while now, and that allows us to um, cast from a Windows laptop and actually control that laptop via the touch screen on the duo board as well. So we don't have to keep using our laptop. Once we start casting, we can control that directly from the, from the IFP itself, from the large screen there too. And once again, it's cross-platform. So we're supporting a whole bunch of different uh, devices with different operating systems, including iOS, Android, Mac OS, Chrome, and Windows platforms. All right, let's take a look at conference now. 
So some really big changes with our, our CP series or our duo board. I'll use those two term, terms in, uh, interchangeably throughout the session. So if I mention CP series, it's just the, the model name for the duo board itself. First and foremost, we've continued our partnership with Blizz, and so that's pre-installed on our panels. So straight out of the box, you can jump in and start video conferencing utilizing that, that application on the BenQ panel. I believe towards the end of this month or early next month, we'll be continuing our relationship with Zoom as well. And so you'll be able to install Zoom on those panels or it'll be installed natively via an update and you'll be able to use that um, as well going forward. Now, one of the big hardware changes we've made with the Duo board is actually embedding a full HD camera, which resides in the top of the panel there. And uh, we've incorporated that with a, a microphone array, which combines six microphones with that camera as well. So we get really great voice quality and picture quality straight out of the box without you having to add extra peripherals to that solution there as well. Now, having said that, if you prefer to use a different camera or you have a different microphone that you'd like to use, you're still able to obviously connect those to the panel and utilize those in that office space as well. Moving along, so not only can we use the video conferencing solutions that are pre-built with that panel, being Blizz and, and, and in the future Zoom, but we've incorporated what we call a uh, Duo OS system. And, and this runs on a, what we call a, a slotting PC or an OPS. And this is included with the CP series in that, in that bundle price. And this is obviously running a, a Windows platform. And so we're able just to simply change from Android to Windows and, and back again, just by selecting a different source there. And what this enables us to do is not only use, utilize the Windows environment for different programs or apps we have, but we're also able to install a, a wider range of video conferencing solutions on that Windows platform and take advantage of those as well. So if, uh, platforms like Skype or Cisco WebEx, Zoom, Google Meet or Hangouts and uh, GoToMeeting, just to name a few, are obviously installable and options available on that Windows platform as well. So we've sort of taken off the limits of, of what video conferencing solutions are available on the Duo board now, which is a great advancement. And now finally, let's have a look at collaboration here. So three new features that we've incorporated with this Duo board, Duo Windows, Duo OS, and Duo Boards. And we'll take a look at um, these three features now. And so this is what we've termed Collaboration Plus. So for Duo OS, it offers a picture-in-picture -picture scenario, um, either with the slot in PC that I just mentioned, or with your own device connected to the panel. So that might be a laptop via HDMI or VGA. Duo Windows allows us to operate two Android apps simultaneously, side by side there. And then Duo Boards allows us to link two Duo Boards together and share information across those and also expand our whiteboarding space. But let's take a deeper dive into this. So with Duo Boards, like I mentioned, we can now extend our EasyWrite whiteboarding solution across two panels. The way this works is that we have infrared sensors on either side of the panel, and so we're able to pair those boards together. As long as the panels are on the same local area network, we're able to send that information and extend that easy right whiteboard as well. So currently this is lim limited to specific applications, but that will expand in the future. And then secondly, we can actually transfer files from one board to the other using our AMS file manager there as well. So not only can we share data between the panels and open it up on, on different panels, but we can also use the one remote between the two IFPs. And this is a great feature to use so we don't have to keep swapping back and forth between IFPs when we're presenting. And we can also take advantage of those spotlight and digital laser pointer features on those remotes between the two IFPs as well to use those as presenting tools, which is really handy. Um, with Duo boards, obviously in the diagrams we have here, they're in landscape mode. This is also achievable in portrait mode as well on the 65 inch models. Now the Duo board is currently available in 65 inch and um, 86 inch models as well. Heading on to Duo OS. So uh, I mentioned this earlier with our OPS system and this offers us um, like a picture in picture scenario like we have on consumer grade televisions. So what we're able to do is utilize the Android platform but see what's going on on that Windows platform or that different device we have connected via HDMI or VGA there as well. And a couple of features involved with Duo OS incorporate being able to adjust the screen size. So we have three different um, sizes of that picture in picture. We can actually capture uh, the, the image shown on that, that picture in picture and import that directly into EasyWrite. 
which makes it uh, incredibly efficient to, to continue collaborating or using that information within our whiteboarding session. And then we can also just save that, that picture in picture as a, as a normal image file to, to utilize later on in, in different uh, collaboration or, or meetings as well. And then finally, duo windows. So this has been a heavily requested feature for quite a while on our current range of IFP. Uh, and the ability is to be able to see two different apps and utilize those simultaneously has been something that we've been pushing for for quite a while. And now that's available specifically on our duo board. So the way this works is that we can just pick two apps that we have installed, or we can pick an app and a, and a, a source as well. So we could pick a HDMI source or a, a VGA source there, and we can display those side by side simultaneously. As, as far as different scenarios go with this, obviously comparing two different documents or being able to use our whiteboard for meeting minutes while, we're, while we have uh, Zoom running on, on the opposite side there or using a browser to display information or researching there is really handy. And this is available through um, our sidebar, which is easily accessible no matter what you're viewing there. And we can also change the side that those apps appear on the fly as well. So if we change from left side to right side, it's really easy to do that. And we can also adjust the size of that split screen as well uh, and make one of those windows larger than the other. It's a really great and handy feature. And then obviously we're all about collaboration and that involves having multiple users use the board simultaneously. And so we've incorporated 20 points of touch and we have different features like dual pen, team post and sticky notes making a return there as well. All right, AMS Cloud Access. So for those of you who are familiar, you'll, you'll be familiar with AMS, it's our account management system. And what this allows us to do is turn this public display device into a personalized work environment. And so we're able to do this by creating profiles for each of our users, and then uh, they can log, log on to that panel with that profile. And they can do this in a variety of ways. They can do that via that NFC sensor using an NFC card just to simply tap on and log in that way. They can do this on the panel itself with an on-screen keyboard and login process, or they can use their own mobile device or tablet to scan a QR code on the panel and log in that way on their own personal device. So there's a whole bunch of different ways they can log in there um, with different levels of security there obviously as well. So not only can we, we personalize this device with our own login and, and, and changing features like uh, volume and brightness and, and wallpaper and desktop, desktop icons, but we can also um, link out cloud storage drives as well. And currently we support OneDrive, Dropbox and Google Drive. And so what this means is that when a user logs on with their profile, they're able to access these drives without further need to log on directly from the panel itself. So not only can they see their contents and access those and open those contents, they can edit those contents and then save directly back to those drives. So it's a really efficient way uh, to access information and present in that regard. Moving along, floating toolbar makes a return. So this is our annotation tool outside of our whiteboarding, our easy write whiteboarding solution. And so once again, we're able to annotate on top of any source or any application there as well. Very similar to what we're currently using on our current range of panels and we can still record and capture from that floating toolbar as well. Let's have a look at how we've designed this duo board to suit co corporate culture and the needs associated with that industry as well. So this is where we're going to dive into the hardware side of things and some of the new features and new technology we've incorporated with this board. So first of all, we've changed our touch technology with the duo board and we're now using capacitive touch technology with direct bonding. And what this allows us to do is get a really um, enhance the experience of annotating essentially. So we're able to write faster on this board compared to our previous panels. We're able, we're able to draw more accurately as well. So it's a really great technology with that and a lot of high-end uh, touch panels utilize capacitive touch technology. I've spoken about this previously. So our full HD camera is embedded into the top of the panel there along with the six microphone array built in either side there. And with our active pens, they come with its own holder and obviously a charger as well. And so we get around, a, around about eight hours of battery life out of each of those pens. Uh, so um, more than capable of uh, utilizing those without further charging for a whole business day, essentially, if you don't return those pens to the holder there. Uh, further down the panel, I mentioned this earlier, we have our NFC tag box and sensor box, and that's how we log into our panels with those NFC cards. And our air quality sensor also lives inside there as well. So we've brought that feature across from our current RP series um, to this one, and that measures the air quality and the CO2 quality within that, that meeting space as well. 
And then we've incorporated our speaker system once again. So even though the sound bar isn't there, we still have two 16 watt speakers with an independent 15 watt subwoofer there as well. So we still get really great audio quality straight out of the box there. And then we have all the normal connectivity options and ports that you'd expect from a panel like this, uh, including USB 3 and USB 2, HDMI, VGA, and then a, a, a wide array of uh, networking and audio ports there as well. So a little bit about direct bonding. On previous panels and in other competitors panels, they have um, an air gap and that, that gap exists between the actual glass of the screen and the, the display panel itself. And what this does, this gap creates what they call a parallax differential. So where we actually write on the board appears differently. And so being able to remove this air gap with direct bonding technology improves the accuracy of that uh, annotation that we make and also the speed at which we can write to. So it's a much better annotation experience overall. And then looking at our active pens, uh, not only do they write, but obviously we can utilize uh, different buttons on, the, on these pens as well, including page up and page down to scroll through documents or browsers. We can hold down on that circular button for additional pointer as well, which is great as, uh, for a presenting tool. And then we can just click on that button once to um, initiate our floating tool that I mentioned before to annotate on different sources there also. All right, let's take a look at the interface here as well. All right, so first and foremost, uh, you'll notice that this is uh, very different to our current interface on our panels. And the reason for that is that we're actually utilizing Android 8.0 or Oreo at the moment with this. Uh, so, so our interface has changed a bit and you'll notice that we have three separate icons on that screen. Wireless projection, whiteboard and collaboration. And these are essentially tutorials. So we wanted to create an experience where if someone walks into a room uh, with a duo board and they've never seen one before or never used one before, they can um, gain an understanding and a quick overview of how to use the different features there. And we'll run through those later on during our demo. Furthermore, we've obviously incorporated being able to pin shortcuts or desktop icons uh, to that home homepage there. And we've also made it really visible when there's a, an update available for our panel. So we, it's not a one and done with BenQ as far as firmware goes, but constantly looking to improve and add new features there. And so down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll notice there's a little icon there. And this will inform users that there's a new update available there that they can download and, and update their panel there. And then obviously our sidebar returns as well. And we've incorporated those new features like Duo Window and Duo OS accessible straight from that sidebar. And it wouldn't be a BenQ panel without having a look at the healthcare side of things. So let's dive into that. So all the features that we're renowned for have made a return uh, in the CP series of the Duo board there as well. Starting with germ resistant screen, which is obviously a very hot topic at the moment with an increased focus worldwide on hygiene and health practices. Um, so that's made a return to this panel along with our CO2 sensor, which measures the air quality within that meeting space. And then uh, the three key main features were for, for most panel manufacturers now make a return obviously with low blue light, flicker free and anti-glare technology. And then finally, let's have a look at IFP maintenance and management. So the back end side of things, we know um, this plays an important role in making the decision, uh, decision about what panel to choose, especially with your IT personnel there. And so we've continued our partnership with McAfee. And so this is uh, built into the panel. I believe you can download it from BenQ Suggest there and you get a free, free subscription with this and you're able to take advantage of all these different uh, features that McAfee offer, inc including device security, data security, and device cleaning options there as well. And then our own solutions, including our uh, display management system or our device management system. And we're able to do a, a couple of nifty, real, uh, really nifty things with this. And this includes controlling display settings remotely uh, via the cloud. We can update firmware and, and push apps remotely as well. We don't actually need to install anything further on the panel for this to work and we can access this anywhere because it is cloud based. We can access this from our, our browser off site if we need to as well. So if the IT manager isn't there on that specific day, they're still able to access and, and um, manage those panels remotely as well. Uh, just to point out, even though I've mentioned this is a cloud based service, there is a local version of this that runs on your local area network that's also available too. And this will work on any operating system as well to log in with whether it's iOS, Android, Mac OS, Chrome or Windows. We're making a few adjustments to this DMS service as well. So this has been out for a little while um, and DMS version 2 is currently rolling out. Some of the feedback we receive from people in regards to DMS is being able to have a look at usage st um, statistics or, or app usage there and seeing how people within an organization are utilizing those panels. 
obviously IFPs are quite a, an outlay as far as expense goes. And so businesses want to be able to make sure they're getting that return on investment or to see where they can improve with training or, or, or best use case scenarios and that kind of thing. So we're, we're improving um, these statistics and making these accessible for those IT managers to, to take a look at and really have a deep dive into how these panels are being used. And, and sort of the, the further training they can deploy to their employees to get them to, to utilize the panels to full effect, um, effect there as well. And this is all accessible through that DMS dashboard, which is browser-based. And then lastly, we've continued our relationship with TeamViewer, which allows IT managers to, or IT personnel to remotely log into the Duo board. Uh, to, to show people how to use a feature remotely or to access any features or change any settings there on the panel itself. And this just works like it does on your laptop or PC. So that's it as far as the presentation for Duoboard goes. We're going to dive into a uh, quick demo here. So just allow me to set that up really quickly. All right, you guys should be able to see my screen there now. And so I'm just going to run through the different tutorials that we have there that I spoke about earlier. So starting from left to right, we have our wireless projection tutorial there. And so if I tap on that, all this is going to do is bring up our InstaShare application. So straight away, we can understand how we can mirror our devices. Um, there's a connection guide that resides just down the bottom of this application there. And it gives us an option to download this app for our own devices. So if we're on our mobile or tablets, we can scan the iOS QR code there or the Android QR code and download that directly from those respective app stores and start casting using that. Otherwise, you'll notice that there's an IP address below that right hand side QR code. And we're able to type that into our browser and download that, um, that app directly from the panel itself. Uh, depending on what operating system we have. So that just brings up a page full of different operating systems and we just like the one we're using to download that app. That arrow, that right hand arrow next to that QR code will just step us through how we actually connect our devices as well. So there's a built in tutorial for that also. Furthermore, I just wanted to point out on the far left side of the screen there, you can see my casting list. Um, and with that, we can change how many devices we want to cast simultaneously. So whether it's one, two, four, or now nine devices, we can simply select that and that will just um, organize our screen in that format, uh, depending on how many devices we have connected there as well. So that's that wireless um, projection tutorial there, which is um, on the left-hand side of the screen. If we move into the center of the screen, we have our whiteboard tutorial. So if I tap on that, this just brings up uh, another tutorial for us and we can open our easier art whiteboard directly from uh, this tutorial as well. If we move further down the, the page here, we can also tap on the active pen option there as well. And so that just explains what the active pens do and also um, dictates some of the different uh, features that we have with those active pens, including page up, page down, floating tool and pointer. And we can also use the, the top end of that pen as an eraser in our um, annotation as well. If we move further across here and we have a look at collaboration, which is our final tutorial here, if we click on that, we have a duo window. So duo window um, is that the first uh, option here that we have and explains what that does. And it will also show us how we can utilize that feature. The same with duo OS, duo board, and Blizz as well, because we have our um, current uh, partnership with those guys too. All right, and that's it for the tutorials. Um, you'll also notice along the bottom there that we have our um, commonly used apps there that I've pinned to the start of the screen. That's completely customizable per user as well. And you'll notice we have our widgets return there with our CO2 sensor and obviously the, the clock and time and date in the center of the screen there. Also, what I might dive into now is, though, is having a look at um, some of those new features. So we'll, we'll jump into um, Duo window first. I'm just going to swap to my camera view so you guys can see this. Just bear with me. All right, you guys should be able to see that now. So what I'm going to do is just select my sidebar here because our Duo window and our Duo OS option also live in our sidebar. And just further down, it's like an, uh, a dual screen icon or an open book icon. I can simply tap on that. From here, you guys will be able to see that it brings up our app screen or our um, source screen as well. And so what I can do is just simply um, just tap and hold and drag these apps to either side of the panel there as well. So I've just dragged my whiteboard across. Um, with easy right and I'll just drag a browser to the other side there as well and so what this allows me to do is have those displaying simultaneously if I grab my pen here really quickly 
for my Apple Pen. So I can just start uh, writing on here straight away as well. And then I can scroll through my browser simultaneously as well. Um, I mentioned before that we can swap the screen there so we can go from one side to the other and back again. Uh, back again. And I can also change uh, the size of this just by moving that tab across and resizing that window um, accordingly as well. And then if I wanna uh, just go to full screen on one of those, I can simply um, tap the cross section down the bottom and that'll just expand that existing app there as well. So really easy to, to jump in and start utilizing that feature straight away. And we've tried to make that as easy as possible just for people who have never used a, a whiteboard or a digital whiteboard or IFP before as well. The second feature I wanna show you, which also lives in our sidebar there or within the tutorials there, is our picture-in-picture -picture mode. Um, the icon just looks like you'd expect it to look, which is a picture-in-picture -picture icon. And straight away, it's brought up this, this little window here that you can see I can move around there. And this has uh, three different sizes as well. And I, um, so, so it's three different sizes there. And there's a couple of nifty tools that we can use with this tool over there. So obviously I can move it around the screen as I see fit. If I tap on that, it gives me an option to change the source. It might be a little bit hard for you guys to see that, but just in the center of screen now, I can actually see different devices that are connected to that, whether it be HDMI or VGA. And so I could just select that and change this from that, that OPS that I'm currently running there to the laptop I have plugged in or something like that. So that's one of the, one of the options there. The other option I have is that I can just bounce directly to that um, other source straight away. So in this case, it is the OPS there. You can see that and it's running my Windows environment. And this is included with the Duo board um, straight away, straight out of the box. Uh, and so then I can just start utilizing my Windows environment. There's an icon that lives down in the bottom right hand corner here that I'm just going to tap. And that'll just take me back to that Android operating system with my uh, Duo OS um, still appearing present there as well. And then finally, if I tap on this, the third option in this bottom left hand corner allows me to save what I'm viewing in that OPS as its own image, or I can import that directly into EasyWrite as well. So I'll tap on the EasyWrite icon there, and that just launches me into that existing whiteboard that we were just using before with Duo Window. And it's just taking a snapshot of that secondary source that I just moved around there on the right hand side. And so once again, I can annotate over the top of this, I can enlarge that um, and edit that image as I see fit. And what you'll notice that my dual OS or my picture in picture there is still, still um, present as well. And I can still operate that and control that feature as well. And then when I'm done, I can simply select my home screen button and go back to that, that home screen with that dual OS. And when I'm done with dual OS, I can just hit the cross there and, and, and close that feature down as well. Um, so that's pretty much the CP series there, guys. What we might do now is head over to um, having a look at InstaShow S as well. So just bear with me and we'll get that set up for you right now. You guys should be able to see that presentation. So we'll get moving with this as well right now. So let's have a look at our agenda for uh, InstaShow S. So what is InstaShow S? Uh, the new user interface compared to our previous model. We will take a look at some of the new features, a comparison of features, hardware and uh, a competitors model. And then we'll have a quick summary on that as well. So what is InstaShow S? InstaShow S is our new version of InstaShow. Um, and this is our wireless hardware solution. And we'll have a quick demo of this towards the end too, so you guys get a, a really good understanding about how this works. So we've got a new user interface as well. So this is the home screen of when you plug in an InstaShow. And this can be plugged into any panel or any display device. So it doesn't have to be a BenQ panel. It can be a normal TV or a competitor's panel or a monitor or a projector for that matter as well. And so when we, we select the source that the InstaShow is plugged into, which just plugs in by HDMI there, um, it gives us this home screen. And we're able to uh, have a quick overview of how to connect our notebooks uh, to that InstaShow. And also um, with our mobile devices, which is a brand new feature. And I'll talk about that shortly as well. So let's have a look at four new features to InstaShow S. And the first one is split screen. So our previous model of InstaShow could only do a one-to-one -one or display one device um, at any one time. Now we've incorporated a split, uh, split screen mode, which allows us to cast up to four devices simultaneously. Um, touchback, uh, we'll, we'll jump into that in a second as well, which allows our Windows devices to be controlled from the InstaShow. 2.4 gig band support, and I'll talk about that shortly as well, and mobile device screencasting also. So like I mentioned, split screen is up to four ways now, um, which is a really handy feature. A lot of competitors only have 
um, up to two devices to be able to cast via a wireless hardware solution. And then touchback. So um, with a touch screen uh, display or a mouse, we can connect to the host via the um, rear USB ports. And basically we can control that Windows laptop directly from the panel itself. So similarly to how I showed you how InstaShare is capable of that as well on the, on the CP series or the Duo board, we can do that with the InstaShow as well on another touch screen um, or via mouse control there as well, which is a really handy feature. Previously, our models ran just on the five gig uh, band there, and that could cause a few is issues with congestion or, or range as well, or different devices who, who couldn't display or connect via a 5G band. So we've added support for a 2.4 gig band there as well um, to make that uh, a little bit easier for people to, to get up and running with InstaShow. And then finally, mobile device screencasting. So previously our InstaShow just ran on button kits. Uh, and, and we'll show you what I mean by a button kit if you haven't seen one before. And they would just plug into um, a user's laptop or, or uh, computer and cast via pressing a button on that, on that button kit. Now we're actually able to cast wirelessly from our mobile devices and tablets. And this uses our, um, utilizes our InstaShare app. So it's the same app we use on our IFPs to cast. Uh, and we can utilize that app to cast to our InstaShow now, our hardware solution as well. And this uses um, both our own app and Google Cast and AirPlay protocols to do that. Uh, a quick comparison of hardware here um, from InstaShow, which is our, our, um, our first InstaShow to InstaShow S. So on the side there, and this is what we call a button kit. So you can see there, it just plugs in via HDMI and USB to power that button. Um, previously, we were able to select the mode. So if we were casting video, we'd select video mode, or if we were presenting on PowerPoint or PDF, we'd select, uh, select present mode. Now with InstaShow S, it intuitively decides what's actually casting and selects the best um, the best presentation there essentially for that content. And so we've changed that button to enable split screen there, which is the new feature as well. And then with hardware, so this is a, a, a rear view of the InstaShow S and you'll notice there that um, obviously we're using DC power now. Previously you could run InstaShow just via USB. Now it needs a proper um, power connection there. So that's that port on the left hand side. And we've also added two USB ports for that touchback functionality, whether it be through a touch cable or um, via connecting a mouse there also. Let's have a quick look at um, some of the specs there. And this is just a comparison between our, our, our first InstaShow compared to our InstaShow S. And these are, you'll see the model um, number or name underneath those as well. So sometimes I'll refer to those as WDC 10 and WDC 20. But one of the big improvements or, or four of the big improvements we made include output resolution. So that's up to 4K now at 30 Hertz. And then the frame rate, and, and we've improved that up to 60 Hertz for full HD as well. And then the amount of devices we could connect. Previously, it was only 16 devices. So 16 devices via button kit. And we've doubled that to 32 now with the InstaShow S. And then we've also increased the distance that we can be away from that host or that base station as well. And we've almost doubled that distance to 15 meters now. So it's quite good in larger spaces and larger rooms where people don't have to be so cramped around that, that panel to, to cast as well and for the devices to pick up on that, that InstaShow. All right, and, and just to recap on four of the new features from WDC 10 to WDC 20. So uh, we've incorporated split screen, which is a first for us, up to four devices can cast simultaneously. We now have touchback as well, so we can utilize the touch screen on our panel or plug a mouse into that to can control that remotely. Um, we can now uh, cast from our mobile devices, so phones or, or tablets running iOS or Android to that as well. That wasn't um, previously available. You needed a button kit to cast to InstaShow. And then the wireless protocol has changed as well because we've added that 2.4 gig band to make that a little bit easier for people to join and connect. And this is a quick overview of um, BenQ and Barco products. Obviously Barco is a very reputable brand when it comes to wireless hardware solutions. And so we just did a, a quick comparison of some of the feature sets here. So um, one that I'll point out, or one of the, a couple of the key differences here is obviously split screen. Barco do offer that. I believe it's a picture in picture split screen there. We offer a true four screen split screen there, um, which is a, a great feature. And we can, uh, we also can connect 
um, more devices now, up to 32 devices. Previously, uh, we were 16, just as Barco currently is as well. And obviously the price level here, this is just an indicative price in here and it's in USD, so just be aware of that. But we come in a lot cheaper than, um, than something like a CSE 200 or CSE 200 plus there from Barco. Also, and just um, as a matter of transparency, one of the big differences here also that um, Barco excel at is, is that range there. So they offer up to 30 meters from that base station with the devices, um, with those button kits. Um, we currently, even though we've doubled it to, uh, almost doubled it to around 15 meters, we're still um, quite limited as far as range goes. Having said that, I'd be surprised if you needed a 30 meter range to, to cast to a particular um, screen or, or projector in that regard but I just wanted to point that out. So let's just have a, it's a quick overview there, quick um, recap. So uh, new features with WDC20 or otherwise known as InstaShow S. So now we have four split screen, up to four devices can cast simultaneously. Touchback through uh, Windows uh, devices as well. And that offers up to 10 points of touch. And uh, we've also incorporated that, that uh, 2.4 gig band for better connectivity there with a, a larger range of devices. And then mobile device screencasting is obviously very important. A lot of people do cast or do present from their own um, portable devices now rather than a laptop. So you can walk into a meeting space and you might have your, your presentation saved to your phone or your tablet and you can just start casting utilizing either our app, AirPlay or Google Cast there as well. Uh, that, that home screen that I showed you initially with the tutorials on how to connect can be customizable with um, different wallpapers. And then we can also update our uh, InstaShow via local file or, or online now via over the air update as well. We're at the end there of that presentation for InstaShow, but we might just do a quick demo of InstaShow as well. So I'm just going to swap over now to uh, Dan's helping me out today. So I'm just going to get him to turn his camera on. I'll stop sharing. Yeah, camera. And we'll just pin his camera here. So hopefully you guys can see that now. So this is our button kit. You can see it's just plugged into Dan's laptop there um, via USB and HDMI. HDMI does all the work here as far as data is concerned. The USB is purely the power of the device. So there's no information or no data being transferred by that USB. It's all being done through HDMI. So that's the button kit there. Yep. And we might have a quick look um, at the at the side of that as well, Dan, just to have a look at that button there. So it might be a little bit hard to pick up. No, we can see it there. That's okay. So on the side there, we have that side button, which allows us to turn it from a single casting mode into a uh, split screen as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes it a little bit easier to see. It's just a simple side button. A one click changes that and allows us to split screen with other devices. As so other well. than that, Joy, we've got pretty much two buttons on the button kit yeah so not, not too complicated it's the obviously the big green button is the casting button then you've got your split screen button. yeah it's pretty hard to miss and this is just a plug and play um device as well guys so you don't actually need any software to install on the laptop for this to work you can plug this into um, mac devices or windows devices and it'll just plug and play straight away so for companies who don't want to um, be fussed with you know, having to install third party applications or more software and making sure that's up to date. This is a great solution for that as well. And most importantly, a BYD, BYOD solution. 100%. So. Yeah. So people are using their own personal device, devices now in the, in the business or corporate scenario. And so just being able to, to utilize those devices without having to, to um, make sure they're up to date with different software is, is really handy there as well. Right. Dan, we might have a we quick look a, at a... Do a little cast. So yeah, have a quick cast. So, so it, it, the transition is quite quick, so I'll try and get it sort of in the background there. I'm just going to change the source here really quickly. Just oh, yeah. All right. All right. So we'll click, click my button, we'll play a little bit, just a little bit of a video as well. You can see that, that transition through there. So I might just... Start my video here. So I don't have any sound up there. Sound. I don't um, know if it's me or if it's you. Let's have a look here. I think Jai put it's the sound me. down. There you go. Yeah, go. That's my Firefox browser. But as far as browser uh, compatibility, Jai? Yeah, Chrome or Firefox. I mean, it, it's just mirroring what's on your, your laptop, essentially. Yeah. So you shouldn't have any dramas um, displaying that regardless as well. Just turn the sound down there. So it's an instant casting solution, guys. You, you, you plug in, you hit the button, and it starts um, casting directly from your, your de desktop there 
as well. What I might do while you're still casting there, Dan, is actually just um, join with my mobile device as well. So just let me do that. And you guys will get an understanding of the split screen there. So this is the sort of demoing the, the ability to be able to use a mobile device with no button kit. So that's what Jai's doing now is he's accessing through his phone, but no, there's no need to plug in a button kit to the phone. No, that's no. right. So this just one runs on our InstaShare app. I'll just um, open that up for you, Dan. So you can see there, it's just a purple app in the center down the bottom there of the, those, those apps there. So this is the same app that we use for our, um, to mirror to our, our CP series or our duo board or any of our other IFPs as well. So um, you can use that on your Android device or you can use um, Google Cast to cast from those devices. Or for me, I'm just using AirPlay. So I can simply swipe down into my AirPlay menu, um, connect to uh, the Insta show in that regard. So you notice there I have my Wi-Fi connected. I'll just open this back up. So you can see there that I'm connected to the, the Wi-Fi that the Insta show is outputting there, which is the WDC 20. Um, and you can rename that network there, obviously, as well. Um, along with the password. So it's just like connecting to another Wi-Fi network or another router there. And that's how I'm able to cast to that um, straight away from my, my own mobile device. Um, like Dan said, it's a software solution with mobile devices or that button kit solution for your laptops. Um, I might grab the InstaShow base. Um, if you just want to show that there, Dan, and then I'll, I'll unplug it. So you guys can see what that looks like. So it has four antennas there, and that's to support um, the increase in range and obviously the 2.4 and the five gig um, bands there. Pretty simple setup there as well. It just has the power button on the top there and just the pairing button on the side. Um, because if you add more button kits and those, those extra button kits, the InstaShow comes with two of those, um, but you can purchase more of those as well if you want more for a larger style boardroom. And we're able just to pair those up also. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the Insta show base unit there. And that just connects via HDMI and, um, and USB. So I'm going to unplug this down. We'll have a look at the connectivity here as well. Right on the table, so there's a little bit better light there. Yep. So this is the rear of that unit there. You can hold it steady. So going from left to right there, we have our DC power obviously, and then we can connect this via LAN cable also. And then for the audio and video, it's just transferred via HDMI. And then you'll notice the two USB ports uh, and they convey touch connectivity or you can plug in a mouse and use your mouse to control your laptop as well. So really standard, um, easy setup, very light unit. Um, a lot of the time when people plug these into their own devices, they just um, mount it to the, in the rear of the panel there or, or, or wherever their screen is or their projector is um, right next door to it. So it makes it really easy to use. Another thing to well. mention, John, maybe is our our button kit holder. Yeah, so let's just, I'll remove that remote so we don't get confused, but this is the holder that comes with the kit um, and it holds two button kits. So you can see there, they just sort of slot in there. So you can have these on your boardroom table and just grab the button kit as you like. That way they don't go missing. Um, and you can always keep, keep track of those. And so when you buy um, the button kits separately, they obviously come with what you see there. So two button kits, one that's plugged into Dan's computer and um, one that's been holstered there as well. And then you can put your other peripherals or or um, tools in there to, to holster those. One other thing I might do, Dan, is just I'll grab the OPS out while you're yes. still there. So yeah, I know yeah. a lot of people are a bit confused about what an OPS is, and I mentioned this previously. Just bear with me. All right, so we'll just put this down on the table too, guys. So this is our OPS. So this is what we call a slot in PC or an OPS. So I've just pulled this straight out of the, um, the side of the panel there. And it just slots in and connects via this connection here um, that you can see there. So that just slots right in. Then we have all that connectivity that we're used to in a normal PC. So USB ports, um, obviously a LAN connection there. These two antennas are for Wi-Fi. So it has a built-in Wi-Fi card there. And we have that HDMI and, and um, audio ports there. Now, one thing to note about our uh, CP series is that it has what we call a LAN pass-through. So previously I had the LAN cable plugged into the Android or, or the CP series panel itself, and that actually conveys that internet connection through to our OPS. So we only need one LAN connection um, to, to have internet access on both the Android system and the Windows system simultaneously. So it's a really nifty design. Then we just have the screws on either side there just to screw this directly into the side of that panel.
And so the OPS will be bundled with the, the Duo board. Um, yes. And as far as specs go? So uh, you can probably see there on the top of that sticker, it's actually an i5 with uh, eight gig of RAM and 128 gig um, solid state drive there as well. And it's a seventh gen i5 processor. So that's all bundled in with the price there. Uh, it does come with Windows pre-installed there. Uh, and all you need to do is to activate Windows, obviously have your own license code. We didn't bundle it with a license code because a lot of organizations have their own agreements with Microsoft, both for Windows and for their um, Office uh, solution there. So uh, yeah, Windows pre-installed so you can start using Windows, but you'll need to activate it via your own license code there as well. Perfect, I might stop sharing. Yeah, there. so we'll stop sharing there. And I'll just bounce back to my presentation. All right, so let's have a quick look at scenarios, guys. I know we're, we're wrapping up here shortly and we'll cover those questions uh, really soon as well. So with scenarios, let's have a look at internal meetings. So for internal meetings with a duo board, we would use InstaShare to cast from our devices. And this is done via a free InstaShare app download. And so we can cast up to nine devices simultaneously to the duo board. And we can also cast from that duo board back to our own devices. And this accommodates up to 16 devices there as well. And the only um, prerequisite for this is that the devices must be connected to the same uh, local area network there. So either via Wi-Fi or, or Ethernet connection there as well. And then if we look at internal meetings with external visiting guests, so we always have people um, coming to our meeting space from outside our, our organization. And so in this scenario, we would use InstaShow. And that's because it's a plug and play um, capable device with, with laptops via that button kit that we just had a quick look at. And there's no software installation. And so this makes it really easy for external clients to come in and, and cast and present um, by plugging the button kit. And then obviously um, we can still cast via mobile phones and tablets by connecting to the, the, Insta Share, uh, the Insta Show's own network there as well. And we can utilize the Insta Share app to do that or use AirPlay or Google Cast protocols there. And then finally, if we have a look at external meetings, it's all about video conferencing. And so we can install apps um, on the native Android operating system. Blizz is already pre-installed there. Very soon Zoom will be uh, installed on there via an update as well. You can also test your own video conferencing solutions on the Android OS. But furthermore, you can do all that on the Windows platform and we really encourage that. A very, a very good and solid solution there. Um, so, so pretty much any video conferencing solution that's available on Windows will work on that OPS. All right, so that's, that's it as far as the presentations and the demos go today. Um, Dan, do we have any questions there? Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, a couple of things that Sanjay mentioned earlier that, that, are, that are worth bringing up again. Um, he just confirmed that that Zoom will be back at the end of this month, um, pre-installed on the panel, which you mentioned before. Yep. Uh, also that uh, Duo board comes in a, a, a 65 and an 86 inch version. Then we had a, a question from Robin, uh, is the AMS cloud on the other model BenQ boards as well? Is it the same as the Duo board? Um, Burek did mention that it was featured on the RPO1, RPO2, RM02, and the CP series, as well as smart projector range. Yep, spot on. And uh, essentially identical. Yes, right? yes, yeah. there's, no, there's no difference there. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, we had one from Sam. He said, can you enlarge the screen, please? I'm not sure if, if he couldn't see the duo board properly or oh, right. what, 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 what it was around that. But, okay. Um, maybe uh, talking about the OPS or the, or the duo window, um, obviously you can change the size of the split screen, um, however you like it, smaller version of the cloud whiteboard and then a bigger version of the browser. Yeah. Um, so there's the pinch and zoom, which you did with the Yeah, so you can do all that. And OS. Yeah, with Duo OS, so there's three different sizes there. And I was just using, it might've been a little bit hard to see, but I was just using pinching uh, gestures, just like you do on, an, on a tablet or a phone to enlarge or, or zoom in and that kind of thing as well. Yeah. 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 And you know, put, put our camera on so that lovely people can see us. Yeah, I think that's spotlighted now. <laughs> Okay. And I'll get rid of this because you're going to get a crazy session. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, I mentioned is uh, WDC, WDC 10 has a USB-C version. Um, Correct. So, so that's one thing I didn't stipulate. So with our WDC 10 version, we do offer USB-C button kits 
obviously USB-C devices are becoming more prevalent and more popular now. It's sort of the go-to port that a lot of people are using and we, we recognize that and, and understand that. And so for our um, WDC 10, those USB-C button kits are currently available and we're working on uh, that same solution for our WDC 20 as well. And obviously that utilized that one cable solution. So you've got That's USB right. cable carrying power, display, yeah. and everything else. That's the beauty of USB-C. You don't need to have multiple cables now to connect the button kit. Um, USB-C is great as far as conveying uh, or transferring information and, and, and data. Um, audio, video, networking kind of stuff, and, and obviously power as well. So, like you said, Dan, it's just a it's a one cable solution with those um, those USB C button kits. Yeah, yeah as exactly, well. exactly. Uh, any um, other questions there at all? Nothing else. Uh, nothing else coming up at the moment. That's okay. What I might do, I think Paul is kicking around. Is he is he in here today? Put your hand up, Paul. I'm not sure if. He's uh, yeah, I'm here. here hey, he hey, guy. Hey, Paul, how are you doing? So Paul is uh, one of my great helpers from our, Ta uh, our Taiwan head office. So Paul actually looks after all the FAEs in the Asia Pacific region. So whenever you guys <laughs> ask me a question, I have no idea what the answer is. Paul is uh, my go-to to help out there along with, with Ed and his team there as well. Uh, Paul, is there anything you want to talk about or anything you want to add today as well? Oh, well, um, well thanks, Jai. Um... Thank you guys for joining. Um, hope you guys like the new products that we're offering today uh, because we have so much more coming this year. Uh, before the whole um, COVID-19 lockdown, uh, um, we actually released a gaming projector, 120 hertz, the uh, TH685. And just recently, we also introduced a, the world's first paint of data signage. And you probably already heard that later this year, we'll have a 4K HDR ultra short throw home entertainment projector. And we also call it a screenless TV, by the way, and that's coming around the end of this year. So you can probably see here that here, being here, we want to give you not just unique products, but really cool products, not only for work education, but for your everyday home entertainment as well. So, um, so given post lockdown, we'll have a lot more webinars coming. So uh, stay tuned with us, um, stick around. And, um, and hope you will experience them with us. Uh, so thank you again for joining and thank you to uh, Dan and Jai, you guys are the best. Uh, we always love your webinar so much. Um, this year has been crazy, so stay safe everyone. And um, back to you, Jai and Dan. We, we always say that Paul is Jai's biggest fan, but he's becoming my biggest fan too. Yeah, um, I'm not sure how is, I feel about that. Well, you guys are the best. <laughs> uh, we do, we appreciate that. <laughs> and, um, like John mentioned. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. Yeah, these guys are in the background. Um, not for us, they're not in the background. They're very much in the foreground. But for, for our resellers, distributors, and end users, they're, they're the ones that are, uh, we're coming to with, with issues and, and suggestions, and they're putting them into practice. And that's why we wanted to get those guys involved with our webinars, just to show um, the wider team and who we've got to support us um, yeah. here in Australia, but also overseas as well. And from what Paul mentioned, I think you guys can see that BenQ are always looking to innovate and, and take on new challenges within that, that, that space as well, whether it be the meeting space, the education space, or even uh, the home theatre space as well. And so like, like Paul mentioned, we have some really cool, exciting products coming up as well. And we're also always happy to hear feedback on any of our products too. And we're, because we have great control over both our hardware and the software, um, design there, we're able to make and, and, and really respond to those requests and those um, that feedback as well. And that's obviously evident from um, the advances we made with our CP series and also with our InstaShow S as well. So if you guys do have any um, ideas or features you'd like to see implemented across our whole range, um, whether it's um, interactive flat panels, our wireless casting solutions, Paul mentioned projectors and also our, our new digital signage, um, which is really exciting as well. Please feel free to contact your BenQ representatives and um, we're more than happy to, to pass on that feedback to, to make real change and, and um, future updates for our products as well. That's right. Um, so Jai, no more questions I, I think in the chat. So, so as always, uh, I'll be following up with everybody who registered for the webinar with a follow-up email um, with some uh, extra marketing materials, also a recording of this webinar so they can pass it on to their customers or to their colleagues. Um, so if you haven't had any correspondence with me or if you didn't register for the webinar today, uh, just contact your, your reseller or your distributor or your uh, BenQ representative and they can pass on the details. 
Absolutely. Sounds good. All right. Well, if there's no other questions there, guys, we might wrap it up. We're about right on time there. Uh, so thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate you guys spending the time and learning more about our, our new range of products. And we'll be in touch uh, really soon with uh, future updates and, and future webinars as well. So thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Because you spoke about the camera, uh, Robin had a, a question. How good is the camera for a conferencing solution? Is it, des is it designed for a huddle room or a small conference? So you can see us there. Okay. Give him a wave, Sanjay. So <laughs> Sanjay and Dan. Um, so that's yeah, the camera the there. Yeah, yeah, a messy room. But uh, I would say it's perfect for that whole space or that small meeting space as well. Um, it's quite a wide angle camera as well. So you, you can, we're obviously covering our home, whole room here. Um, so it's good for that. If you are using something like um, a Logitech Meetup or, or something that has sort of zoom and pan features, obviously that may be uh, more beneficial for your setup there. And you can just plug those in via USB as well um, to utilize those features. This is just a static camera. We can't change the tilt on it um, or, the, or the zoom functionality there as well. So just be aware of that. Yeah, so Robin just said, uh, we'll, we'll go back with a few more questions yeah, before, yeah. But, um, but Robin just said, uh, just asked, is, is that using the internal mic? Are you using your, your I'm laptop? Using, so the I'm actually speaking to you, Robin, on my laptop at the moment. So that's not what the mic quality is like. Um, but you saw before where Sanjay was sitting, that's generally where we sit for our meetings. And it, the mic quality is quite good um, and quite reasonable for that as well. So the range is, is decent on it uh, also. So um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm speaking from my laptop mic at the moment. So. Right. Um, All right. Any other questions? Yeah. There? So we did a, a couple. Okay. Um, another one from Robin before was: um, Is there an option for an external desktop microphone array? Yeah. So you'd be able to use that as well. I think we've got a three point five um, mil um, output there that you can plug a mic into as well. USB mics may work as well. Um, we just have a mic select option in our settings for our panel, and so you would just choose which mic you want um, to actually utilize there. Unfortunately, only one mic can be used at any one time. So you just need to pick and choose which one you want to use there. Uh, another one from Robin, does touchback work with Windows slash Mac wireless casting? Uh, so wireless casting, yes, for Windows only. Um, Mac is a little bit finicky um, just because it's Mac. And, and Mac OS isn't, remembering Mac OS isn't built with touch because Apples don't make touchscreen computers. Um, so you can install uh, third-party drivers onto your Mac to get it to work, but it's nowhere near as easy or, or as um, sort of fluid to use as a Windows OS is. Mm -hmm. Usually what I would say to that, Robin, is Windows, yes. And that's where I would <laughs> limit my response. <laughs> so Windows, definitely, yeah. So you didn't show the shroud on the on the camera. Yep, that's all good now. So I might just jump up here, but it's just a small plastic shroud that you can see there. So it just clips on top of the panel, and, and like Sanjay mentioned, it just has a magnet in it, so it just holds it there to, as well. So that's obviously supplied with the panel, and you can just pop this over the top there, and it just clicks straight into place there. Um, something uh, else about the the OPS. So we we obviously want to like to talk a lot about the OPS. It, it mm. expands the capabilities of duo board exponentially sort of exponentially yes right? um so specs are important too mm. um because you don't want to have a, a pc that's not going to be able to handle the software you're using or yeah you know, it's got to have enough ram so sanjay's put in the chat there uh some specs i5 8 gig 128 gig solid state that's yeah. correct yeah and into intel gen 7 yeah so it is quite a reasonable processor with plenty of ram for your normal business meetings uh, and with that solid state drive it it runs really well also as well. Not a, not a lot of storage, but I don't think a lot of people are storing files on, on that OPS um, like we do on our own personal computers and on, on network drives and that kind of thing as well. But plenty of storage there to save any documents or, or um, images or that kind of thing. And then uh, talking about storage, I mean, you've got access to AMS. Um, yeah, cloud, cloud storage. Cloud connectivity yeah. and cloud storage. Um, and then obviously on your Windows environment, you've got your browser with your um, you know, Google Drive and 
Dropbox yeah. or whatever else you want to use. I mean, well. the OPS and both the panel have USB ports as well. So if you want to plug in um, an external drive or it's a thumb drive or a, an actual hard drive um, and save your work, you could do that as well. Yeah. Uh, any other questions there? Um, I haven't been more. Question the chat's going a little bit quiet. That's okay. Um, That's all right. It means I've answered most of the stuff. You're very efficient as usual. Yes. Um, Oh, there is one. So Robin, again, thank you very much, Robin. Um, you mentioned this before, but natively, how many devices can connect wirelessly without external hardware? Up to nine devices, Robin. So yeah, so let's talk about that then. So nine devices when we're casting from our devices to the panel. But if we're, I mentioned before, there was two way mirroring. So we can actually cast from the panel back to our own devices as well. And we can do that with up to 16 devices. So from the panel to our devices, it accommodates 16. From our devices to the panel, the panel accommodates nine. Okay. And that's with no um, additional hardware. That's just a built-in solution with what we call InstaShare. And we can do a mixture of InstaShare and InstaShow if that was the case. Yeah, so let's talk about a scenario where that, um, that may be um, uh, an issue. So I mentioned before, Insta Show is very popular with government agencies, um, just because of security protocols and that kind of thing. So um, we might have Insta Share for internal meetings and then Insta Show for external guests. It's kind of rare that we would use that, but it is it is applicable. Yeah. Uh, Glenn, is there any front facing USB on the CP series? There is not, mate. They're actually um, just in the side. So on the right hand side. Um, there's USB ports there. Really easy to access though. They're very much right near the front of the, like the front of the bezel there, but they just, they're, they're side facing, that's all. Uh, any other unique ports or any other port selection that we, we should talk about? Um, it's just expanded because of that OPS. So we just have a lot more connectivity there than we would on a regular panel because we've increased, um, the, well, we've got two operating systems essentially running there. Yeah. Can you touch on sure. So let's talk about that as well. So in duo board with our, with our CP panel, I mentioned before that we can link those panels and you saw in that image, they were side by side in landscape mode, but on the 65 inch model and the, and the CP series is available in 65 or 86 inch currently with the 65 inch model, we can actually turn those panels and have them side by side in portrait mode as well. Or we could have a single panel in portrait mode also. And so when we turn those panels, if, we have, if we're using duo, um, duo boards function with two panels, they have IR sensors in the, in the top of the, the boards and that's how we would um, pair those, having the, the two tops, generally speaking, side by side there. Um, or if we're just using one panel, we can just turn it on its side as well. And the camera actually has um, a gyroscope built in as well. So it'll automatically adjust that image um, depending in the orientation that we have that, that panel as well. Uh, only available on the 65 inch though, not available to do portrait mode in the larger size. Uh, Glenn again, so is dual wheel config only use right hand side USB? Yes, that is correct. Glenn, there's no USB ports on the left hand side. Could you access the USB from the bottom on the left hand panel? Is it on the right hand side? Um, the, the, Glenn's talking about in, uh, Board yeah, so uh, no, so you'd only have access to the right hand side no. USB port, but you can transfer files. So it doesn't matter what panel you open up those files on because you can just transfer them from one board to the next. So that's, that's why we've incorporated that mode because even though we block ports on that left hand side, when we have on that left hand panel, when we have them side by side, because we can transfer uh, files using AMS, we only need access to, to one USB port on one panel. Another thing, talking about in dual duo board mode um, with, with two panels side by side, the connectivity between the two, how close do they need to be for them to, to talk to each other in that mode? Pretty, pretty close because it uses um, infrared sensors. So in that image you saw before, they had the panels pretty much almost touching and that's how I would install those or mount those panels. Or if you have two on, a tr two, on two trolleys, you'd have them right together. You couldn't have one on one wall and one on the other wall or something like that. It's a, it's a, a needs direct line of sight there for that to work. And it's quite short range as infrared generally is. 
Okay, no more questions so far. Um, Sanjay, would you like to add anything else? No, I think we've covered all the points. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much cover everything. Um, the CP series does come with, with its own wall mount as well, which I forgot to mention. So um, straight out of the box, you can you can wall mount that as well if that's a solution you want to take. In fact, all our new series of uh, panels, so the the RM uh, RPO2 models, will have uh, the mounts incorporated there as well. But thanks again, okay. and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Bye.